look outside the Beltway at the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor. We are back now with our panel. All right, so this week the Supreme Court term ended. We'll talk about some of the key cases, but uh, making news this week is a big case they did not take with these pharmacists out of Washington State who are not allowed to say that they will not give out the Plan B pill or emergency contraception, though it violates their religious uh, faith. Um, they say that they had a religious freedom claim against that. The Supreme Court voted not to hear it. It takes four. So the three dissenting justices, Justice Alito wrote the dissent saying this, this case is an ominous sign. If this is a sign of how religious liberty claims will be treated in the years ahead, those who value religious freedom have cause for great concern. Chuck? Well, you know, uh, it's becoming increasingly clear that the one of the most uh, important or maybe even historic events of the last year was the death of Antonin mm -hmm. Scalia on the Supreme Court because everything would have been different if he were still there. On this particular case, what I hear Alito doing is, just as you say, kind of issuing a warning to his fellow conservatives of the long-term leftward uh, potential drift of the Supreme Court because, in truth, on this particular case, uh, there wasn't really a whole lot conservatives could have accomplished. If they'd actually taken the case, it would likely have either come out 5-3 in defense of the Washington rule, making it a national rule, or a 4-4 ruling with the four liberals and four conservatives, a tie which would have left the Ninth Circuit's opinion, allowing Washington State to impose this requirement on pharmacists in place. So I think he was more just trying to project make a statement about what he regards as the leftward drift of the court over the long term. Yeah, and part of that comes um, with Justice Anthony Kennedy as well, because uh, we saw him on critical decisions this term, side with the left wing of the court on affirmative action and on abortion. Um, conservatives say they're increasingly worried about ever being able to count on his vote. Here is uh, Carrie Severino. She's with the Judicial Crisis Network to that point. I think uh, we see that increasingly he's willing to abandon some of the, those core principles of constitu the constitutional system when it comes to achieving uh, mostly liberal policy goals, and that's, that's discouraging to see. So, Senator, I mean, he, he certainly um, is not someone they can count on, they think, on some of these big issues anymore. Th that's true, and you look at uh, Justice Scalia's death, and obviously it was a, a major blow, not only to conservatism, but I think to the balance of the Supreme Court. And it's a message, I think, for uh, Republicans out there who are on the fence, and, and Reagan Democrats and all others, if they want the court to go far, far left, uh, then vote for Hillary Clinton. If you want it to actually go to the right or be more moderate in its decisions, then you would vote for Donald Trump because he's already put out his list of, judi uh, of justices he wants considered. Uh, conservatives approve of that list, and there's going to be some major decisions affecting the very fabric of this great country, and uh, you have a choice. And this, so that's just going to come down to the nuts and bolts of where you want to be uh, on, on the side of you know the left or the right, and uh, that's kind of what's, what's happening politically right now. I mean, Brett, no doubt the court is going to have a major impact, as they always do, for generations to come on these important issues. But do you think people really will go to the polls based on that? I think it's a big, I think it probably is, as much as any issue is helping Donald Trump. Because if you listen to conservatives on this, on this uh, question of whether they can support a man who has been for much of his life a Democrat and who is not with them on key issues, trade being the most conspicuous at the moment, they'll say, yeah, but the court. You know, we can't afford to have Hillary Clinton picking uh, a series of new justices that will tilt the court left for, you know, as far as the eye can see. So I think in that sense that it is a factor in, in the extent to which Trump can count on conservative support. It helps him a lot in that regard. Yeah, and Heidi, um, Senator Scott mentioned, or Brown mentioned the list that was put out by Donald Trump, and it did have uh, a lot of uh, suggestions, it seemed like, from Heritage Foundation and the Federalist Society, other very conservative groups. But then he did say after the fact, well, I'm not definitely sticking to this list, but these are the kind of people that I would appoint. Um, and there are some who, who feel that even if they're on the fence about this issue, they're not 100% sure they could trust him on these appointments. Right. Well, and if you remember when he put that list out was kind of when he felt like he was back on his knees, back on his heels with religious conservatives. And I think Britt is ab absolutely right, because if you look at also the history of the court, obviously does not want to be political. But uh, when there are these losses, the effect can be that it, it does help gin up 
the base. So the, one of the most critical constituencies uh, that Donald Trump is, is really struggling with right now are those religious conservatives. And if they view this as a shot across the bow on additional religious liberty cases, which, as you know, Shannon, covering the courts, are going to be coming through uh, again as early as the fall, that could really play to his benefit. But one thing that I did do in my Supreme Court research that I wanted to, to, to point out um, is that I, a part of this decision um, might also be related to the fact that there have been so many recent contraceptive cases that have come before the court, like Hobby Lobby and Sisters Little of the sisters, Poor, that yeah. we also might have to just kind of take into consideration that the court might have thought, how many contraceptive cases can we hear, uh, and that we should kind of hold our conclusions at this point about what that means for the additional cases. Mm -hmm. Well, and of course, when we had the tie on the immigration decision out of Texas uh, a few weeks back, that was a situation in which the administration was essentially a loser in that case. The president came out and spoke, I think it was that day, when he was talking about the fact that obviously a Thai court is not the ideal situation. Here's a bit about what he said. I nominated Judge Merrick Garland to the Supreme Court more than three months ago, but most Republicans so far have refused so to even meet with him. Uh, they are allowing partisan politics to jeopardize something as fundamental as the impartiality and integrity of our justice system. Uh, and America should not let it stand. So his nominee, Merrick Garland, would fill that ninth seat if, you know, confirmed, and that's a big if, although there are scenarios in which that could happen. But in recent weeks, that tie has, you know, brought back these uh, calls again, Chuck, for Republicans to do something about Merrick Garland. They seem pretty united in not doing that. You know something? I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if um, if uh, Hillary Clinton won the White House, they might deal with it in in the lame duck. On the other hand, I also wouldn't be surprised if Republicans refused any Democratic president's nominee to the Supreme Court for the next four years, if there were any. Uh, it is uh, that 4-4 case, though, it's important to note, was the only thing even close to a victory that the right got out of this Supreme Court term. Uh, and that, and it's obviously not much of a victory because it doesn't establish a precedent. It was a bad term for the right. And quickly, obviously, if the GOP loses control of the Senate, that complicates the game even further. Well, that's another reason to vote Republican and keep the Senate. Make sure Chuck Schumer isn't the majority leader. Then you'll go back to the ways of uh, the Senate not doing anything. At least they're communicating, doing ordinary business, and doing the people's business. So that's the choice, uh, progress or go back to deadlock. Well, the court certainly is a key critical issue this fall. Whether you like Merrick Garland or you want to see somebody else, it's up to you, voters. Thank you, panel. We'll see you next Sunday.